I'm Jean Sherman, founder and director of Sky, the Sherman Center for Culture and Ideas. Sky takes you to Tokyo, where we sit down with Astrid Klein and Mark Dytham, co-founders of Klein Dytham Architecture. I originally met Astrid and Mark in Tokyo several times during the course of my many visits to the city. Sky Architecture Programming is heavily invested in education and in developing professional networks. This impetus aligns quite clearly with Klein Dytham's invention of Pecha Kucha. Pecha Kucha is a series of events where designers, architects, students and the culturally aware gather to share their work. The Pecha Kucha Night was started in 2003 and is now a global event across an amazing 1,200 cities. At SCAF, a former iteration of our foundation, the Sherman Contemporary Art Foundation, we organized two enormously successful and very lively Pecha Kucha Nights. Klein Dytham Architects was founded in 1991 in Tokyo and perhaps unusually in Japan represents the possibility of a strong, rich dialogue between the Anglo and Japanese worlds. I want to thank Johnny Walker, our Sky Global Emissary, one of our eight global emissaries worldwide. Johnny has been an invaluable member of both SCAF, my former foundation, and Sky, the foundation in its current iteration. Johnny and I have worked together for over 30 years, organizing projects between Japan and Australia across exhibitions, commissions, and conferences. I am so proud to return to Japan, a country which I've visited 58 times and in which I have orchestrated, directed and managed years and years of cultural projects. Sky's proud to bring this episode and others to you during a time of closed borders and travel restrictions. Astrid Klein and Mark Dytham now speak to Sky Tokyo correspondent Kate Klippenstein. Kate is an author, journalist and frequent broadcaster for Japan's national media organization, NHK. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Sky's 2020 Tokyo Hub. I'm Kate Klippenstein, a writer based in Tokyo for many years who works around the world, sometimes writing from my hut in northern Kenya. Today I'm in Anjin Lounge in Staya's tea site in Daikanyama, and I'm joined by tea site's marvelous architects, Astrid Klein and Mark Dyson. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for coming today. The duo is behind some very vibrant architecture, dare I say exuberant, <laughs> and also sustainable yet stunning renovations of commercial sites. Um, including many resort hotels. They're also known for their commitment to social issues and community, as is evident in Pecha Kucha Night, which has become quite a global thing. <laughs> That's right. That's right, yeah. 1,234 cities. And counting. And counting, yeah. Oh my God, it's extraordinary. So here we are in Teesite, and I know that um, this must have been a very delicious project to win. I know you had some big competition as well, like um, <laughs> Kengo Kuma and Atelier Bow Wow. What was in your pitch that you think got the jurors, uh, won them over? I think we got the branding right and uh, uh, the client is a self-made man and uh, very successful, uh, even more successful now of course, but uh, Back uh, when we were uh, 155 architects in the one room, uh, listening to him briefing uh, us on the competition, uh, he mentioned that he was looking for uh, not only the architecture, but the interior and the contents, the merchandise, everything to nicely meld together into one package that could then be exported to other countries. 
Um, so he was having a big vision and uh, uh, obviously by then I think a third of the population, uh, Japanese population, had the um, tea card, the right. uh, Staya uh, loyalty point card and uh, uh, with the big T on it. And uh, so when we walked out of that briefing uh, uh, place, uh, we saw, well, this project was going to be in Daikanyama. There's absolutely no way that we're going to have big signage and billboards because obviously Daikanyama is a little bit upscale. And uh, yeah, we have the Danish em embassy opposite, we yeah, have exactly. the Egyptian embassy, and so it's very low key and very And very most importantly, <laughs> we have uh, Fumihiko Maki's hillside terrace right next door. Yeah. So here we are, the pressure is on. So we're on our best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you did do fantastic integration with Maki's Hillside Terrace because right. everything is, is very serene and it's very um, low scale, you know, uh, I think you really... So, but more than anything, you know, there is, a, there is this client who has kind of built this Tsutaya Empire and, you know, a certain, I mean, probably the whole Japanese population knew about this. The tea mark was very famous by now. And so we thought that, okay, we can't really, uh, putting big signs and signboards up is not the thing to do. <laughs> and, uh, but what if the building itself could express that T? And uh, so that's where the project started. It's a very simple uh, uh, idea of branding the architecture without being too obvious about mm -hmm. it, because we also knew that he would sit uh, opposite uh, at Cafe Aso and looking over onto the side, he's a, a big car aficionado and, uh, you know, he would park the cars and uh, obviously chat to the people who look at his cars <laughs> and, uh, and so he would see his project there and from opposite, from the other side of the street, you, you can recognize the three T's, but obviously when you get closer, uh, you, so, so for this not to be lost, we kind of said we, we made this uh, uh, T screen, T pattern uh, screens. Was so yeah, it, I mean, was it, was, it, it was important that the T just wasn't applied to the facade. So the, the right. building, the base of the T forms the spine of each of the buildings. And that's where we have the main structure, um, the staircases and the, uh, the elevators. And that's where we have all the earthquake bracing too. So that, that T is not just this piece of graphic so just, slapped on. So just know. like <laughs> the, uh, the, the stem of the T is supporting the roof of the T. Right. right. So that's, that's the structural concept of and the whole building. And that whole spine does all the work for earthquake. Right. And then we can just prop, prop the slabs very easily and with very small columns around the edge so it feels very light. Just like the T card is a yellow T mm -hmm. and blue, two blue squares, that's where the windows would be. And so by having two T's next to each other, the, the windows would link would with, with each other. Yes, yeah, so clever. So it was really... And, and uh, so subtle. But was, for the client, was it a, a sort of a leap of faith? Because I think in Japan there's a lot of obvious branding. It's very popular um, in my experience. Um, and was it an easy sort of sell? I don't think so, because uh, he's, a, he's a risk taker to a certain extent. I mean, as a, as a proper entrepreneur. And uh, the fact that it's not obvious branding but much more upscale because it was going to be the first uh, um, store that is not sort of in the suburbs and you know looking like a blockbuster uh, outlet um, it had to be a little bit more sophisticated and it, I mean it was a big leap of faith for him I think because it was the, this project uh, when when the competition was announced it was the, the, the moment the iPad was launched it was really that moment. I came back from New York with an iPad and, and, and the books were going to be dead. And here's this client that's wanting a bookstore. And it was an, it was an incredible moment, yeah, to, to, to think that this, this, you know, is this guy right? You know, and uh, his, he, you know, long live the books was his... Yeah, no, uh, welcome back <laughs> welcome to the Welcome back book. to the books when we opened this, you know. And he also was targeting, I believe, 
the baby boomers. So these are people that have retired and they have a good yeah, so that, so in Japan we well, call that premier age, yeah. Right. So that's above fifty, right. and so there isn't much in the city to to that that can be used mm. by those, you know. And so mm. that was a very interesting point. Yeah, the younger, you know, the the, the bathing ape generation um, have their own thing. But if you're fifty and you're, you know, your kids have gone to university, you've got some extra cash and you want to spend your life, then where where do you go, you know? And this is this is this is where you come. And I thought it was very pioneering, and then I was fascinated to find out that immediately it attracted all age groups. I think because it was authentic in a way, it wasn't trying to be fashionable, uh, but it was focusing more on uh, being comfortable, and uh, uh, the client insisted that it would be neutral, which sounds very scary, but what he actually meant he said, like, neutral like a classroom, like a school classroom. And what he meant is more sort of, you know, the, the familiarity of what you know, uh, so that it would kind of just disappear and you can focus on what you're really interested in, which would then be the books, the music, the movies, and uh, all the other uh, nice uh, uh, Toys. I mean, the other key word was seamless, yeah, seamless. You had to feel you could go from space to space without thinking you've actually gone anywhere, you know. And I think that was the whole concept between uh, the magazine street that runs between the three buildings. So three buildings. And we could have made one film, one books, one music, but we decided to put all of the books on the ground floor and drive this magazine street through. Now, and in the evening when you walk through, you actually don't really know you've gone from building to building to building, but you actually do. So it is a sort of seamless corridor. Exactly, exactly. Um, and as Astrid said at the beginning, you know, the way that we got the, the teas and the glass, the glass faces the glass, there's a seamlessness there as well, yeah. It's a wonderful expansiveness. We feel so cramped often in Tokyo. In bookstores, I love to look at books, but there's always some brushing against you. But here you can really, really take your time and um, really get lost, which is such a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes, I, I think it's also to do with a lot of seating and the fact that uh, uh, there is, uh, especially around the windows, uh, you can sit at the windows while drinking your coffee, listening to music, or reading your book. And uh, actually, uh, the client insisted that there should be seating, because if you can consult a book, uh, you're most more likely to convert it into a sale than not. If you have to stand all the time, uh, then it, the conversion rate is not as high. So uh, he's been in the business for a long time, uh, so he knows that, that people tend to shop more when they're comfortable and relaxed. And I think if the store's generous in allowing you to read the magazine or read the book and sit down, you're generous back. You're not checking the price on Amazon while you're sit sitting there to, do, do I buy it now or do I buy it at home? You tend, well, they've, I've had a really nice day and I think I should support the the yeah. bookstore by buying the book, you know. You sort of feel so. sort of loyal. <laughs> So I was reading that when you came here around 1988, I yep. believe. <laughs> I came here September. in 86, <laughs> okay. so fall of 86. So I was uh, here a bit earlier. But uh, is it true that Toyo Ito just sort of handed you or introduced you to a Okay, we a should go back a, a little bit, yeah. I mean, we, when we were both at the Royal College. We met at the Royal College of Art. We came together. Astrid won the Richard Rogers. Uh, tra travel scholarship from the Royal College. I won a uh, scholarship from a new town in the UK where I, where I was grew up called Milton Keynes, which is biggest now the biggest new town in, in, in the UK. Um, we came to Japan together, and uh, we, we wrote to before that we wrote to ten architects. So Izozaki, Ando, Maki, Ito, the whole gang, you know. Um, and amazingly, um, they all saw us when we arrived. We met 
all of the top 10 architects wow. in Japan. A bit, there was a, there was a, there's a bit of a backstory to how that all happened, but it was incredible, and we were always very generous when people We were very us. surprised. We were very surprised. And that humbled. You, and humbled, yeah. Well, you must and, have showed them some... And we didn't really... Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. But we, did, we weren't saying we want to work in your office. We'd like to stay in Japan if we could find work. And um, Toyo Ito uh, heard that and said that he had a project that he would like to show us. We actually thought he wanted to show us one of his projects. We that didn't know he was going to introduce us to a, a client. A project that recently finished and completed <laughs> and he wanted to show it to us. So uh, we, rocked, we rocked up at the office and then, then there's this client appears. And there's a hair salon in Ginza. It's, um, it's was it 40, so 50, Toyo 50 Ito, Toyo Ito uh, unfortunately couldn't attend the meeting because uh, <laughs> he had this... Uh, um, he broke his uh, collarbone, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> at, a, at, a, at a very merry party the night before. At Shinohara's house without a handrail and fell down. This has not been told many times, this story, in public, so I'm not sure we're allowed to tell it. But he'd fallen down in Shinohara's house and broken his collarbone. And that's why he wasn't there. I'm not sure if we're allowed to put this in. But anyway, anyway, mm-hmm. we'll talk about it. It's a long now. time ago. It's a good story. <laughs> so we suddenly the client appears. It speaks quite good English and says there's a hair salon with 30, 30 set chairs, and it's in the heart of Ginza. And uh, how how long would it take? Miss Mister Ito recommended you for the project, and uh, how, when could you get the concepts done by? We were actually staying in a love hotel, which we didn't kind of realize the, the significance of love hotels, and because it was the Korean Olympics, Seoul Olympics, and there were no every. Everybody was coming back and there were no hotel rooms in Tokyo. So we were in this, we were staying in yeah, We bought some drawing boards and off this project went. And um, yeah, so, but the thing was that Ito-san had started a project, uh, a global project, and was looking for some international staff. We were the first international staff in the office that could co- help coordinate this project. And in return, he would um, give us this project because there's no way you're going to fit into the office. So we'll give you an, your own project and you can manage that. And that's how it started. And it's still, we think it's still there. To, the last time we checked, the hair salon is still there. And we know people that go there and have their hair cut there. So it's, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> but just extraordinary, did you get help? From his practice in Toronto. So this was the way. This was the way it worked. But it was very funny that James Gowan, our professor at the Royal College of Art, said, "You'll go to." So James, uh, our college, always said that I'm not going to tell you how to do anything. Once you've drawn something, I'll talk about it. But I'm not going to give you any help because you know what's going to happen. You're going to leave college. You'll win a competition, get a job, and you you won't have me to ask. You're on your own. You're on your own. So that was the Royal College of Art way. Yeah, we didn't teach you, but it was a great lesson. And so we had to decide ourselves. We had no one really to talk to in English <laughs> about what we were going to do to ourselves. And we, here we are in Tokyo, in Ginza, with a very large interior to do on our own, our first job. No experience. Oh my gosh. So baptism by fire. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> but going back to you, to Toyo Ito, so you did subsequently work in his office for a year or two, something yes, like that? that's right. And I think that that was, had a big influence Possibly on the way you... Well, yeah. uh, I mean, when, when we first arrived, we, we couldn't speak any Japanese. And, uh, uh, but Toyo Ito and the, and the office, uh, the people in the office back then, um, they kind of uh, welcomed us. And uh, uh, we were part of the office and they have grown into our family in Japan. In a way, and uh, of course, you know, it's it's always those relationships when you're young that are the strongest, um, that you cherish uh, for the rest of your life. So, in that sense, and and also because Toyo Ito uh, is really good at nurturing young talents mm. and mm-hmm. encouraging um, younger uh, architects. Um, so, uh, yes, it was very significant and we're still kind of uh, uh, you know working with him on uh, uh, home for all uh, uh, NPO uh, and I'm teaching at uh, the um, uh, children's school for uh, the Toyo Ito children's school for architecture so uh, she's a professor there so but <laughs> professor is a big <laughs> word but anyway <laughs> Teaching architecture to kids is, uh, is again, it's uh, trying to inculcate uh, 
uh, this uh, 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 thinking uh, into kids that you know architecture doesn't have to be square and you know it doesn't have to be doesn't coming be in building, layers yeah. like that, yeah. uh, but that art architecture can be much more interesting and much more. Uh, varied and <laughs> well, you're, you know, you're in very good company. Of, think of all the great foreign architects who have actually practiced here. Mm. You know, starting with like Condor going way back, but you know, then mm. um, Antonin Ray Raymond and Frank Lloyd Wright. Mm. And mm. I think I love Catherine Finley. I mean, mm. she Absolutely, was yeah, yeah, her yeah. hairy, hairy house yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 wall and, and Tom Hennigan's uh, cow yeah. sheds. And, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, yeah. so you're, you're, you know. <laughs> You're gonna, your legacy is going to... I'm not sure about that. I think so. 30 mm. years is really sculpting the landscape. Well, it's just going to get longer now, isn't it? We're not going to move somewhere else, are we? <laughs> no, it's a really lovely place to live as well. I think that this, you know, the city is lovely. Um, the, the climate's really, really nice. And obviously uh, the culture's fantastic, yeah. True. Food's pretty good too, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, speaking of culture, you know, we want to talk a little bit about how you've taken some elements of, of traditional Japanese craft. Um, I'm just thinking of Ginza Place and um, incorporate that into the facade. And um, I know that uh, Sky would really like to hear about um, right. some of those projects. Where so Ginza, Ginza Place was another competition that we won and uh, we've uh, done the massing and the facade, not the interior, uh, with uh, uh, Taisei uh, Construction Company. And uh, so Ginza is, is, a, is a place of elegance and sophistication and uh, tradition and all the craftsmanship. Yeah, craftsmanship. Uh, so trying to express that uh, on this corner site, uh, which belongs to uh, Sapporo Real Estate, um, which uh, are behind Sapporo Beer. And uh, they've uh, had this site for uh, a very, very, very long time. And uh, uh, so it was about time to redevelop it. Right. And uh, we kind of um, tried to pick up on uh, the VACO building, mm -hmm. uh, building opposite, opposite, yeah, yeah. opposite, which is this beautiful classical building that has uh, bands. And tablatures. Uh, like yes. And trying to uh, wrap it into uh, the buildings adjacent. Um, so the actual building envelope is not very attractive. It's very faceted. It mm -hmm. is five facets. Uh, and trying to disguise that in, uh, in a kind of mesmerizing way, uh, that's where the pattern comes from. And the way the pattern moves, it links into the, side, into the buildings adjacent, but it also moves up in a, in a sort of elevating uh, uh, dynamism. And uh, so all these panels, uh, they're aluminium panels, I can't remember. How, yeah. Do you remember how many? That's about 5,000. Yeah, about many. Five anyway, thousand. and they're all uh, sort of handcrafted, hand welded, and uh, uh, they because they are different sizes as they go around the building and as they go up the building, they are smaller scale at the bottom where you're closer so that you don't feel too overwhelmed. And then they go up to kind of give this sort of elevating feeling. And uh, uh, because there are earthquakes in Japan, you, you usually got to deal with joints that are sort of they always start with 20 millimeters, okay, <laughs> uh, to see if they can get away with it. And then the architect comes in, oh, 15, oh, so 15 is pretty less, normal. Less, yeah. less, less, less. And uh, because they got to kind of give. And, um, but because this was such a, an important statement as a building, uh, uh, Taisei engineers were uh, absolutely amazing. So and we were they, trying to push it down to eight, yeah. yeah we they, to were, half it, yeah. they were trying very hard uh, and they came up with a system 
where it would move in a case of an earthquake and which it then allowed for the joint to be only eight millimeters wide. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, yeah. And uh, yeah. So, so these people in an earthquake, that. things have to rack. They can't, they, yeah. they've got to be allowed to twist and they can't, you know, they can't touch one another, but they slide horizontally and now it's a patented system. But we saw this on the earthquake t table. So they made these massive mock-ups and they start to shake it. And we- Six meter by six meter mock-up mock -up, it was. Yeah. And, and it was so, dancing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my. So, it was I, dancing, it so, was so So I think cool. we went to like one in, so normally you design a building for one in 200 sway. And I think we went to one, one in 60, uh, just to prove that it could actually, could actually move. Uh, but, the, but the whole, um, this double facade and this translucency is to do with the tra Japanese... Um, Skashi body. Skashi body. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Skashi, which uh, is... Yeah, means which translucent. is the sort of... Uh, uh, which is mainly used for incense burners, where you put the incense inside and then the, the, the nice... Uh, Aroma. Perfume, aroma, aroma. <laughs> and usually um, <laughs> comes porcelain, through the uh, we, te we, tend to, we tend to lose our English words in Japan. We, 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 we know we what the Japanese is, Japanese. and now we <laughs> struggle with what's that in that, what's that in uh, what's that in English? So, <laughs> but yeah, so there's a very nice traditional um, component to the project too. But then this Japanese high tech, right. which is coming from um, is which is coming from Taisei, yeah. ta ta and how do we engineer this? And this teamwork is really important too, yeah, how yes. the team comes together to make this. Again, there's no ownership as such. And then when at the topping out ceremony, there's a fantastic tradition where they put in the last structural beam, and I've forgotten what it's called, the Kaikaishiki, Kaikaishiki, Kaikaishiki yes. and they, they put in the last beam and the construction company there, we're there, we all sign the beam, and then they put it in, and the last bolt's a gold bolt, well, a gold-plated yeah. bolt anyway, but it's pretty, and the, these traditions are fantastic in Japan, yeah. Well, talking about using sort of new materials, I'm thinking now Soma Hall, you moved away from steel and used a, a special kind of coated timber for Correct, that project. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it was yeah. to do with the length of the timber, yeah. We wanted mm. to have these laths, yeah. uh, which so they're, it's, it's local timber and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's engineered timber, so they, they glue and laminate or they laminate it together. And they're 20 meters long, which right. is about as long as you can right. get on a truck in Japan, yeah. So for the, uh, um, it's actually called uh, the children's home for all in Soma. Uh, and uh, uh, because of its location in the middle of a park, and, but it's very close to the uh, Fukushima exclusion zone and therefore there was radiation. <laughs> ね、Therefore, there was radiation, and uh, as a token, they've uh, been taking away about 20 centimeters of the topsoil. But of course, if you are young parents with uh, uh, toddlers, uh, I remember they were very, very nervous. They would carry their kids everywhere from the car park into the building. They would not let them walk because, as toddlers are, you know, they're kind of crawling on the floor, <laughs> much closer to the radiation than you yeah. up here at 150. And uh, so there was this big nervousness, but as little kids uh, need to exercise their muscles to become stronger, they need to run around, they need to climb, they need to play. Uh, so they needed this place uh, uh, to go to. 
you know, all the kids can run around in the park. You know, there's not so not so dangerous. So there's this for the for the smaller children, uh, this uh, children home for all. Uh, and uh, it's this round building. It looks a little bit like a carousel in the park and uh, with windows all the way around and uh, very exposed to the sun. <laughs> so again, this was a project uh, 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 which uh, was initiated by uh, Toyo Ito. And uh, uh, Toyo Ito said, well, it should be like a straw hat you know, that protects you in the park. And so that's where the shape of the roof uh, was born, like a floppy straw hat. And, uh, uh, and somehow the structure uh, was made with these floppy long pieces, uh, 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 really wooden long. slats, um, that were laid on a form Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, kind of uh, uh, fixed together, cross, cross, uh, fixed together, so that when you take the form away, that it would kind of keep the sort but, of but, but, shape. But, yeah, there was, a, there was a straw hat notion, but there was always, always the notion that kids wanted to play in a forest and they, they, had, they couldn't play outside, they should have to play inside under this floppy hat. So there were these tr tree co columns. There were six um, uh, wooden columns, which are designed like trees, which support the, the roof, and, and it's a pretty amazing structure. Mm. Um, so yeah, we thought, well, there's no too. park without trees. That's so right. we, kind of, <laughs> we, kind of, we made a tree. And, and then, the, as usual, you had some it. fun elements too, like yes. actually the tree. Yes. We've got some owls, owls in there and, and some branches birds, and birds, and rabbits, squirrels. And rabbits. And so there's and a little all, game, you can count the animals. Animals in the room. How many animals can you find? And then all the lighting in there is designed like fruits. So the fruits hang off, so there's the wires and they wrap around the trees and then the, the, the pendant lights are actually almost like the, the, the fruits hanging off the trees. Yeah. So some really nice little, little simple things and it's fun. And um, how many people use it a, a year? Like 60,000 kids go yes, there. Yes, well, know. kids and parents, pa parents I guess. Each so, year, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Like, um, so it's still being used today um, and the community is incredibly vibrant there, yeah. So and out of this very difficult moment, really fantastic things happen, yeah. And, and you the positivity there exactly. and an energy there. Uh, which is really fantastic. Oh, it's great, it's been a lovely project. Well, two, the, two things came up, uh, graphic. I mean, I think a lot of your work is really <laughs> defined by its a sort of pop and then graphic yes. quality, which I love. And I think of Sinden in a way is, yes. you know, it's just, it's like yes. a, yeah, I guess so, yeah, building. It's like a sign. I think somebody uh, uh, once called us glor. Uh, I mean, we're, we're not nothing more than glorified graphic designers, you know. As <laughs> not architects, glorified graphic designers, which so. which we somehow enjoy. Enjoy, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just talking a little bit about cultural sensitivity. Just working here for a long time, and we we've, we've talked about it a little bit already. But I know that in Australia they were very curious about when you did the uh, mixed baths. Um, okay. Was that Moku Moku? Moku Moku. Moku Moku, moku, moku you, yes. Moku yes. Moku you, and of course they, they're also very keen to hear about uh, the veil, another the wedding veil, yeah. wedding veil <laughs> and sort of, Off you go. so, uh, well, that's the, the leaf chapel, and again it was in the, in the grounds of uh, uh, Rizonare Hotel, uh, which the client only just bought, uh, and, uh, uh, so the Hoshino Resort uh, traditionally was very much into wedding business. Uh, I think Hoshino-san is third generation uh, hotelier and uh, uh, with a sort of a, uh, a newer vision and uh, I think he's been doing really well and uh, everybody looks towards uh, Hoshino-san in how to uh, kind of keep uh, hotels going. Anyway, uh, so uh, he, this, uh, this uh, Rizonaro Hotel, which was built by Mario Bellini in the bubble, uh, uh, was uh, uh, a, a big mon monster. And uh, so Hoshino-san said, uh, Can, uh, we need a wedding chapel. And uh, uh, have you done a wedding chapel before? So no. Oh. <laughs> well, but uh, I need something that would, will make headlines because I have no PR uh, budget. <laughs> marketing budget. So uh, and uh, so in Japan there is no one religion, uh, and uh, 
uh, but people tend to marry in a, in a uh, Christian way. And uh, so, so oh, that's, that doesn't sound right, really. We couldn't really use the cross, yeah, it seemed wrong. It, it seemed wrong. I mean, getting married is a big day, okay, in, in everybody's life. So let's just celebrate it in a big way and it doesn't have to have a kind of religion attached to it. And uh, uh, so we decided to have these uh, uh, two... Uh, kind of leaves that flatter to the ground uh, and uh, and kind of combined and uh, uh, one it was just glazed while the other one is a steel leaf with about 4,200 uh, perforations which each has a nice acrylic lens into it uh, and uh, uh, it was based on the inspired by the wedding veil uh, the, la uh, the lace of a wedding veil uh, and when the ceremony is over uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the groom gets told you may kiss the bride and lifts the veil and at the same time this steel veil, uh, while there's a big music crescendo to uh, um, kind of uh, camouflage the sound of the... the very uh, slight sound of the <laughs> hydraulic. That, well, that's very quiet. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the, the wedding chapel would open onto a pond and uh, with stepping stones and a nice champagne uh, lawn uh, on the other side. And uh, so the whole wedding congregation would kind of be surprised to start with and uh, eventually they would uh, walk out over the stepping stones and uh, hoping uh, that the bride with her long gown uh, and maybe her heels uh, doesn't step beside the stone and, fall and in, falls yeah. into the <laughs> pond. Um, but uh, we kind of warned the client, uh, uh, you know, just, uh, just in the hope that he would understand. Uh, we didn't want to put handrails up. And he said, no, don't worry, don't worry. We have a big hotel behind, lots of towels. If anybody uh, falls in, we have lots of towels. <laughs> But what's interesting is after the you know the crossover, have the champagne toast, then the uh, then the veil closes and resets for the next wedding. So they do six or seven weddings a day, and so it's a one way, it's a one way route, and the bride will never meet the other bride, and uh, it's it's uh, fantastic. very but, efficient. But but that but that so so from a, being a defunct hotel, an empty hotel, and not being used, uh, that restarted the hotel business, and we've only just finished renovating all the rooms, 250 rooms. It's been a 10 year process. Wow. Or 15-year wow. process, in fact, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because there wasn't the capital money. So the, the idea was to do the to the wedding chapel first. Don't worry about the rooms too much, because you know what? People are going to come. They're going to change, go and have a party. Then they'll go to our new building, our, our reception building there too. Get 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 drunk. Go back to the room, and they won't they won't notice the room. So um, so, so we've only slowly gone round. So, but Moko Moko you was then eventually also added uh, because people. Uh, uh, it was again uh, uh, addressing families and uh, normally uh, in Japanese traditional bath houses uh, you have the, the women go to one side with the kids and then you have the men going to their side. Which is pretty recent actually. They hmm? started in the 1970s. They used to have, used to have cognac all the time. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so that's, yeah. so yeah. that means that you know families who would kind of come uh, uh, to the resort uh, couldn't go to the uh, bars together. So we still have the separate uh, uh, bars for both women and men, uh, where you kind of get ready and do all the washing, and then you can kind of come together in the uh, commune rotemburo if you so want to, mm. um, and, uh, and be together as a, as a family in the woods, uh, in the outdoor bars, and uh, So this, have was, a good this time. was the first konyoku that had been built since the war, the official uh, one. Um, and so I want to thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> I adore konyoku, and I, I look for inns right. that still have them because they have them, the ones so, from but there's, but there's lots of little, little tricks there. So you actually come, so first we put nit nit nitrogen in the water, so, you, so that's why it's milky. So we inject that just like the Guinness, uh, the thing in the bottom of the Guinness that fires up the bu bubbles. So it's, it's a bub so it's a mi milky water. And then as you arrive into the, the bath, you actually can drop down to this level before anybody sees you within the bath. So some modesty rules. 
So <laughs> things we have to think about, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I think you know, it's yeah. A lot of young women are very modest. But it, but again, going back to the chapel, it was a, it was this Japanese technique and technology and um, attention to detail uh, about How? making the making this veil open and close. Yeah, we, we at the beginning we thought. We wanted to, oh, wouldn't it be cool if that opened and closed? And we were quite apprehensive, you know, never seen a building open and close and so on. And Could it be then, dangerous. And somebody, somebody said, uh, oh, you should talk to these uh, stadium, <laughs> stadium uh, 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 engineers who, they make opening roofs all the time. So for them it was no... And, and then so we talked to them and said, well, that's... Child's play. So we can do that. You just put two ramps with the small. Yeah, but what was small. It, but what was interesting when it opened, it made this very slight noise, a knocking noise. Yeah, and so there was this, so it's Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. So they said this this so they sent the fixer around, who arrived on a massive Harley Davidson, Japanese dude, and then he listened to the noise it's making, and he said, "Oh, it's to do with the spring of the uh, we we haven't calculated them. If you we just undo the bolts and the hinges, we move them like two degrees, we'll kill that." So sure enough, they undid the bolts, they twisted these base plates, didn't make any noise, and then he. Drove off into the sunset on his Harley. Love you have to write about these episodes because they're very vis cinematic. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just talking about, I mean, I just love that, that you are celebrating all kinds of creative people mm. Mm. Um, and wanting everyone to have a chance to present their ideas. And, and in Japan, it's been, it has been hard because it costs money to rent galleries or right, right. have a nice central office. So, so you, I think your show would Yeah, help. I think we've always, from uh, Deluxe, which is an Azabu Juban, where we didn't really have enough, uh, we, we wanted to have a bigger office than we had, and we kept walking past this, this warehouse, and when, when we inquired about it, they said, well, yeah, it, it's free, but it's only we, we can only offer it for a year, and no one's going to rent it for a year because you've got to do it up. And like... Hey, I'm from the UK, we can live in a warehouse, we can work in a warehouse. And we brought a, brought a group of people together, five or six of us rented it and used it as our, 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 our office space. And then to help pay the rent, we started to run events there and rent it out and have shows. Then that led to Super Deluxe. And when we have 31 events a month, and then, well, we went from having four or five events a month in Deluxe to potentially 31, and then we didn't have enough events, so we dreamt up chapter night it was the dawn of digital photography and projectors and things and was a chance for people to give a show and tell but architects talk too much so the 20 slides 20 seconds format appeared and the rest is kind of history we've it's grown now 1235 cities around the world and it's been extremely important right now during the pandemic as a way for people to get together virtually as opposed to physically we've been physical until now so it was a really and we didn't want to go virtual because we felt it wasn't it wasn't right we wanted people to physically get together but when you can't do that um, you know by connecting via zoom it's been extremely interesting and now we can now we've been meeting people that we've been talking to via email for 15 years <laughs> We never met them, and now we can suddenly drop in and make presentations together. And uh, we've had over a hundred events during during the pandemic, um, and had people like Carl Bass, the former CEO of Autodesk, Eve Beha, um, Abe Rogers, Richard Rogers' son, and everybody's come together with really positive and creative stories in this very difficult moment. So, uh, you know, we always look on the bright side yeah, of life. <laughs> I'm Dr. Jean Sherman, founder and director of Sky, the Sherman Center for Culture and Ideas. You've been watching a Sky Cinephile Hub episode. This episode has been proudly supported by the Sky Cinephile Circle of Private Patrons. We are grateful for their generous assistance alongside a number of commercial, educational, cultural and government organizations, including the City of Sydney. Sky Virtual Hub 2020 is supported by our broadcast partners, the Nelson Mears Foundation and the Malonglo Group. More episodes are available for you to enjoy at sky.org.au. Thank you for joining us.